I'd like to start with a, a poem um, and uh, it's called Clutter. And it turns out, I, I read this, I actually um, was at a, um, at a community where I was doing a talk and somebody in the community read the poem and I loved it and she gave me a copy. And then it turns out that the woman who wrote it actually was a San Diegan who lived to be over 100 years old. Um, so when I did this talk at the V a couple of weeks ago, I found out that she was actually the author. So her name, again, the, the poem is called Clutter. And um, the woman who wrote it is Natasha Josephowitz. Okay. I own so much stuff that it's beginning to own me. I am my stuff's servant. I dust it, move it around, take it with me when I change residences. I have so much stuff that I forget what I have. And when I need it, I forget where I put it. I have stuff to store stuff. Soon I'll have to leave the car in the street to store all that stuff in the garage. I have electrical appliances and gadgets I never use, such as a pasta maker, a crepe pan, and a fondue pot. I have a slow cooker to cook slowly and a microwave to cook fast. I have an upper oven, a lower oven, and a toaster oven that can do everything the other ovens can. I have a drawer full of egg slicers, apple cores, cheese graters, potato peelers, spoon holders, lemon squeezers, tea strainers, and nut choppers. And then there is all the stuff I hold on to for when my grandchildren will grow up and might want. My children didn't like the Swiss cowbell, a music box, an old puzzle someone might put together again. And the stuff I can't throw out because it triggers a memory, like an empty perfume bottle, an alligator wallet, a perfectly good watch whose small face I can't read anymore. I also have some things that might be useful someday. Plastic rain caps, sewing kits from hotels, shoehorns and buttons that belong to clothes I no longer own. The guest closet has no room for guests. The coat closet has no room for coats. Soon, my husband will have to move out as his closet will have no room for him either. So I always like to start with that. Anybody want to give me a reaction? Did you think it, did it resonate? I see some, thank you, Marlene and Elizabeth. I appreciate that I have someone to talk to today. Yeah, I love that poem. I still, every time I read it, it still resonates. Um, so this talk is a little bit about the stuff that we own and then what to do uh, with the stuff that we own. So um, the title, I know that I was just on two weeks ago uh, because we had a rescheduled date. It was supposed to be three months ago. That one was um, was six months to right sizing. So there will be a little bit of overlap in information, but um, it will not be as, uh, you know, you'll get a lot more into the re-commerce of things. I see a hand raised. Um, Jean, did you want to ask a question? I just need to move. It's too distracting. Uh, no, that was uh, meant to be a thumbs up. Oh, perfect. Thank you for the thumbs up. Okay. So with that said, can everyone I'm assuming can see, can see my screen? Um, this isn't the solution. I'm going to change the view so that it's slideshow. Can you all see that? Oh, well, now you can't because I just changed the uh, the view. But um, I've been doing this talk uh, for eight plus years. And, you know, it's funny how many times people say, I'm just going to let my kids deal with it. And um, public service announcement, that is so not the answer. Um, if you can show of hands, how many of you have ever had to, uh, as a sandwich generation, you had to deal with your family's things and you thought, okay, thank you, Marlene. And you're like, I am not going to do this to my own family. Well, yes, you you are not going to do it. Um, I also like to ask the question, show of hands, so you could put your hands up in the react. I'm assuming you all know how to use the, um, the reaction um, bar here. But if you said that you were going to leave San Diego next week and you left everything behind that you didn't want, how many of you think your family would want your stuff? I'm waiting for a hand. You see that none went up, right? That's the typical reaction. Um, and I want to say that too, you have to keep in mind, if your family doesn't want your stuff, it's going to be pretty hard to sell it to other people. So I, I always like to kind of set the bar for you with that. Um, okay. So does your stuff own you? Um, 
So I always like to, like I said, get a show of hands from people. If you'll uh, raise your hand, if if this um, resonates with you when I make the statement, um, I paid a lot for it when I bought it. If you can just sh thank you, I see some hand raises. Um, I believe it's worth a lot of money. So let's turn this one off and start again. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, next question. I believe it's worth a lot of money. Um, anyone? Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm holding on to it for family. So I'm going to turn this one off. I'm holding on to it for family. Okay. Um, I'm the family historian. Any hands on that? You're the, okay. Thank you. Um, if I fix it, it might be worth something or I might use it again. All right. Thank you. I have a strong memory attached to it. Oh, sorry. Okay. How about I feel guilty throwing it away? Anybody? Okay. How many of you um, are just, you're just overwhelmed? I just don't even know where to begin. Okay, great. Um, wonderful. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about the overwhelm and what to do. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to spend a little more time talking about the available um, options for unwanted things. So this is what I'm going to cover today. Here we go. Ugh. Okay. So who am I? I'm gonna, um, you kind of learned a little bit. I'll give you a little more about that. Why are you here? That was just that exercise that we just did. I, I always like to... Um, ask people if they know what senior move management is, which I will ask in a minute, um, how to lose the things and not the memories, and then what are the available options for unwanted items. So, all right, that's what we're gonna cover. Um, because I can see when you raise a hand, uh, if there's something that you wanna know right then, um, I will stop and pause and, and answer your questions. And it's also gonna be good for me to stop and pause because I'm gonna have to take a sip of tea. I don't have the vocal strength that I've had thanks to COVID. So one sec. All right. So um, I always like to start with an introduction because I think that who I am makes a difference when we talk about the organizing space. Um, and that is that I come from a family of chronically disorganized people. Um, I really want to do a talk for you guys on ADHD and chronic disorganization because what we're finding is a lot of seniors have ADHD. And I always ask the question, how many of you have a grandchild that might have been di diagnosed? So I'm always just curious as a poll, is there anybody here who has a grandchild or a child that might have been diagnosed with ADHD? Okay. So thank you. So what you're going to notice is that um, you may have, uh, you may be one of those pack rats um, if, because that tends to run in families. Um, I didn't understand that myself when I started this business. I have a mom, I'm her only child, and my mom always had too much stuff. And I was always trying to get her to get rid of it, to let it go. I started trying to help her. Then I hired a professional to come in to try to help her. Um, the problem didn't go away. Um, and now I understand, um, and it wasn't until, so my child was diagnosed with ADHD seven years ago. Then I realized I had it. And I just realized back in December that the reason that my mom has a problem with stuff is that she also has ADHD. So it's been very full circle and I've I've been doing a lot of coaching around it. And um, so it's really my personal area of interest, but I bring it back to this because I also have an attachment to things that an organizer who just discards things easily won't have. And and I, I like to ask this the audience, if you had to describe yourself, are you the piler or the filer? So raise your hand first if you would consider yourself the piler. And the piler is the one that likes to accumulate. You like stuff. You like to acquire. Piler. Raise your hand if you're the piler. Okay. I see just Don and me, Maureen, Shirley. Okay. So I'm going to give it another minute. So, okay. So we have a few pilers. And then how many of you would call yourself the filer? So you're the one that wants to have everything put away. Okay. So is that new hands for that? You're the you're the the filer. 
Okay, so this is the other thing that I've learned. So a lot of you are the ones that, that like to have everything having a place. Those tend to go together. So you tend to have a relationship where one person is the piler and one person is the filer. And I'm always asked, what do you do about that? And um, I tell people to pick their battles. You know, you have to figure out what room is the most important for you that it needs to be clean. Um, and then and then pick your battles. Like for me, it's the kitchen. I need a clean kitchen. I also have learned that if I have too much clutter in my house, it overwhelms my brain and I don't make decisions as well. Um, but I'm also sharing this with you. Uh, so the room on the top left was my oldest child's room. And that's would have been what my room had looked like when I was a teenager. Um, and that's actually an early sign of ADHD and also someone who might end up with hoarding disorder. The, the slide on the bottom is also my stuff. Um, when I cleared out my childhood belongings and I wanted to share them with my children to see if they wanted any of those, um, they did not. Uh, but it was I, I, I can show you that you can take a picture of something and it's just as memorable as actually holding on to that item. But also, you know, when we're going through our things, and again, I asked how many of you, would, your family would take it, you know, very few of you said yes. So again, it's going to be really hard to sell that Girl Scout sash unless I'm a celebrity and it's worth a lot of money, right? So there are some things that you're just not going to be able to sell. All right, um, next slide. So I always like to show of hands to ask how many of you have heard of senior move management before, which is what my company specializes in. Um, show of hands. So Sally, Marlene. Um, okay, so seven of you have heard of it. Um, take your hands down and raise them again if you've heard of it, but it wasn't because you've heard me speak. Sally. Okay. All right. Um, all right. It's a little hard for me to navigate understanding that. So I'm going to skip that one. Um, okay. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about for those of you, because the majority of you have not heard of it. Um, and I want to get rid of this. Hold on. Okay. Um, so a little bit about my company. It's technical difficulty. Hold on. Okay, so a little bit about us. Uh, we are a 10-year-old company, um, and we work all over San Diego and South Orange County. Um, we're members of NASM, the National Association of Senior and Specialty Move Management Company, which means that by the end of what I'm about to share with you, you may know someone that lives somewhere else, and we're part of a national association. And most people don't even know that our industry exists. Um so let me tell you what we do. So when somebody is moving out of their home um, and it's it, it's seniors, but we also do other people because people would see the work that we did for other people and think, I want that. Um, I always like show of hands. How many of you like to move? How many of you think moving is fun? Raise your hand. You'd rather move than take a vacation. I don't see anybody's hands going up. Exactly. So moving is one of um, life's top stressors, depending on where you look, it could be one of the top five stressors, but it is very off putting for us to have to go through all of our belongings, you know, pack them all up, unpack them, and then we're going to feel, you know, really um, unsettled, which is a hard thing that it causes a lot of stress and chaos, and then throw into the mix if you have to take vacation time to make a move. Uh, it's unsettling. So senior move management started because seniors are often making a move out of a family home and they are downsizing or right sizing as the term we like to use. I'm sorry, hang on one second. I've got a meeting going on and it's distracting. I got to tell them to guys, it's still, can you, can you go up to like upstairs to Brian's office? Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, with my ADHD, if I hear multiple conversations, it, it's disrupting. Okay, so um, so a senior is often moving out of a family home. And when we typically move, we're usually going to a bigger space. So we don't have to call our belongings and, and go down. We, can, we don't have to worry about that. But when a senior is moving, they are going down in size. And now you are tasked with what do you do with all of the things that you don't take. So um, the first thing that we do when we work with a client is we create a floor plan. So we know exactly what's going to fit in their home. 
Then we arrange all of the logistics of the move for them. We work with vetted professionals, vetted movers. I don't know how many of you have ever had a mover that didn't show up when they were supposed to. And it's very, um, it's, it's very stressful. So we work with vetted movers. We help our clients sort through their belongings, help them determine what they're going to keep and not keep. And, um, and then we do the packing, the unpacking, we organize, decorate, um, we figure out what to do with everything that you don't take with you, which is a big part of the puzzle. And then if we refer you to one of the realtors that we work with, our services are covered, um, which is, is a wonderful thing because everybody who is selling their home is going to have to make a move. You guys can also go out to the back. Sorry. All right. I'm having issues today with this. Okay. So we typically will start with um, stickers where we ask our clients to identify what they're going to take with them. Um, you probably, if you've ever gone through any kind of organizing, you might hear the keep, toss, you know, gift. And so this is kind of like our version of that. Um, and then the next slide is what do we do with everything that you are not keeping? So it's a combination of selling your items, which we're gonna really go into today donating, which we'll talk about. And then I'm also going to share with you what liquidation is. Um, and those of you who may have heard me talk about this before, it's a repeat, but it's it, 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 uh, there are a lot of new names I see today. So a liquidation or a buyout is after we have determined everything that somebody is going to keep when they move and then what they're going to give to family, you're going to have other things that remain. What we do as a company is we'll go in and we'll assess what you have and just determine if there's anything of value. Uh, we had a client who actually had a $15,000 painting that they didn't even know was worth $15,000. So it was really good that we were able to look over everything. We'll pull out jewelry. We'll pull out anything that we think is of value and we will broker the sale of that item separately. And then we bring in what's called a liquidation or a buyout company. It's really the same thing. A liquidator or a buyout will come in, they'll assess everything that you're not taking into your home, and they will figure out what they can sell versus what is the fee going to be to, to dump anything that can't be sold, and they will give you um, an offer. And typically, they will make an offer to you, which is, I will give you $1,000, and I will take everything that remains in your home. Now, if you have a lot of items um, that they can sell, and you don't have a whole lot of labor cost, then that number will be bigger. Sometimes our clients end up paying the liquidator, but it's less than calling a hauling company and it's better for the environment. And the liquidators that we work with will actually, anything that they don't think that they can sell, they're gonna salvage what they can and take it down to Tijuana and try to keep it out of landfills. Um, but again, I like to always put that codicil back there for you that you have to be aware that if your own family doesn't want your stuff, it's going to be really hard to sell it to someone else. And we are going to talk about the market. And um, in terms of donations, I always recommend that you call a donation company that will do a pickup. That way you're not putting it in your car and driving around and, and you know, not taking care of it. Um, we have on our website a list of donation um resources that will come and do pickups. I will also tell you that donation pickups are getting harder and that really started during COVID um, when a lot of people either left San Diego and you know needed to get rid of their things or a lot of people use that time to get their homes organized. And then you also had all of those donation centers that were closed for a period of time. So they really are taking the cream of the crop um, and they usually, a lot of times, will need at least a two-week leeway um, if you want to go that route. And then we're going to spend a lot more time talking about selling your items. Okay. So any questions so far? All right. With that said, um, the other services that we provide are organizing. Um, I always tell people, too, if you are sitting in a storage unit and you're not, and it's just sitting there, it's just costing you money, it's much better to have somebody go through that storage unit, um, pull out, you know, item, itemize everything that's there, pull out what's of value and then take care of it rather than, uh, it's just, I, I call clutter units just deferred um, decisions. That's, that's what a storage unit is. And then we also offer um, photo digitization and organization. 
Um, photos are, uh, if you don't back up your photos, the, the older ones, you're going to start to see already, I'm sure that they're disintegrating and yellowing. And that's because they are not printed on the same kind of archival quality paper that we now print paper photos on. So you can even use your own phone to back up those photos and digitize them. If it's not something that you want to print or put in a book and you just want to share it on social media, you can actually just take a picture of that picture and it's good enough quality and at least it will stop the disintegration. So I like to just talk about that. Um, and my little public service announcement, you know, if you um, go onto Google and you say, what are people most likely to grab in a fire? Oftentimes it is photos. So if you have a lot of boxes of photos that you've been um, putting off dealing with, um, perfect is the enemy of done. You don't need to chronologically organize them. You just need to um, rank them by A, B, and C. A is I would display it. B is I would put it in an album and I know who these people are. Those are the ones that you want to digitize and save. If they wouldn't go in an album and they wouldn't be displayed, then maybe you don't need them. And they definitely don't need to be saved chronologically. They can be um, all of Christmas, all of soccer, all of family vacations, just act acting on it rather than getting them out of those boxes. And another thing just to share, you know, those old photo albums that were glued down and um, if you try to take them off, they'll tear. You can actually use dental floss for those. So um, anyway, okay, so let's get started. Um, how many of you are still holding on to items of your children's that um, are in your home? They've moved out, they've got their own families, and you're still storing things for them. Okay, I see several of you. Well, the first step in uh, re-commerce and getting rid of your things is telling your kids that they have a certain time period that they have to get their stuff out of your house. That is what happened to me. Um, I grew up in Florida. My stepfather was clearing out the home. He's like, you got to empty your bedroom. I brought a duffel bag full of things that I had held on to from college, I mean, since high school, and uh, none of my kids wanted my stuff either, um, so it's pretty common, but uh, if they if they have their own homes, time to have them get their things. Now, if you have a child that is not yet permanent and they're sort of still moving around, I always recommend that you tell them that you'll have, you know, depending on the space that you have available one, two, or three storage bins that you're happy to keep for them until they have a permanent home. But otherwise, ask them to go ahead and get their stuff out too. Okay. Um, so why no one wants your things? How many of you, show of hands, grew up where the family had, a, you know, china and crystal and it was displayed in a hutch and you would bring it out for special meals? And okay, I see uh, at least five hands on that one. That's pretty common. And how many of you have um, grandchildren and children that are still living that same way? Raise your hand. Elizabeth, your family, your family is still doing that? Just putting out the china and the crystal? Or was that just a, an, from an, the last? Okay. So again, we're living differently. Um, and if you uh, want people to buy something, it is going to be very hard to... Um, to sell it if they're not using it. Um, when my grandmother passed away, I was her only grandchild. My mom wanted me to take her China. And I, just to give you reference, I had gotten married in 1999. I was still of the generation that registered for China. My grandma died in 2001 and I didn't even want her China. I'm like, I'm not even using the China that I just registered for. I love my grandmother, but I didn't want her China. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm having so many computer issues. Okay. So back, sorry. So I, I jokingly tell people that I can tell the age of somebody um, based on their kitchen. Um, and if you think back to it, you know, people in the greatest, uh, the greatest generation, they came from a time when everything was, you know, um, they were dealing with the war and rationing. And if they were going to buy something or spend money on it, it needed to be very well made. They used it until it could no longer be used. Mm -hmm. um, I love this, this um, ice maker. I didn't even know what it was, by the way, when I started uh, working, I was told it's amazing. Um, the client that we worked with was a retired judge. He was um, living near, uh, near SDSU. 
and they were downsizing to a senior community. And if you can see the picture of the kitchen, they had a pretty big kitchen, but they downsized their entire home um, from to one drawer and one um, cabinet. And this was actually one of the items that they wanted to keep. Uh, apparently yeah. they worked really well. But the other fun story about this couple um, is that that couch that you see when we decide what furniture someone's going to take, you know, we want to take furniture that's well-made that they can get in and out of easily. And um, this couch, when the movers, so it had been given to them as a wedding gift. And when the oh my gosh. movers went to move it, they commented on how heavy it was. So it was a 60 plus year old couch. And again, things were made very, very differently. Or it's all the good that's so, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Next slide. All right. So, this is just okay. So, um, before we go into how to sell things, I want to give you some ideas on what you can do to get your family to say yes to those items. Um, so, the first thing is to create a legacy list. And a legacy list is where you come up with five to 10 items that are significant to your family and your family's history. And you want to document those items. You want to share the story of what they are and what the significance is. And you're more likely to get a yes if you document those things. Um, there's a site called Artifacts. Um, I should have taken that last A out. It's artifacts.com. Um, you don't have to use a site like this, but I really like it. Um, because you can actually share the stories on video, audio, you can take pictures, um, you can, of course, write, and then you can come up with a QR code. And I believe that anybody can get up to 10 items artifact for free that you can then share with your family. Um, so that's a really good way once you've created that legacy list to preserve the legacy list and share it. Um, I also love the family show and tell. I did that personally. I shared with you guys the beginning, that slideshow of my Girl Scout sash, my prom corsage. So nobody wanted my prom corsage, but I wanted to share the story about my prom and how I ended up going to prom and not dancing and who my prom date was. So sometimes we just want to know that our stories and who we were are going to be remembered, especially by our children and our grandchildren, because you know, they didn't know us when we were younger. And so a lot of uh, the family show and tell is a really good way to express who you are and share the significance of those items. And then a lot of times you can photograph the item and then let it go. So I'm going to pause for a minute to take a sip of tea. Um, does anybody have any questions as I'm going? Like I said, my vocal strength is not great right now. Okay. I want to share the story of the lamp too. This is okay. Jean, you have a question. I just wanted to share that I actually managed to give my entire Girl Scout uniform and badge sash to the local Girl Scout headquarters for their archives. Oh, what all of this was like generations ago. I love that. That's but I did take photos first. Oh, good. And isn't it, isn't it just as nice to have the photo of the item as if you had the tangible item? Jean? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. That, that's my experience. So I want to tell you the lamp story. Um, so my I was my grandmother's only grandchild. That lamp that you see um, was my grandmother's uh, condominium. Um, you could probably tell how old that furniture was based on the flowers on the couch. Um, but she'd always promised that that lamp was going to go to me one day. Well, she died unexpectedly, and she had not told my mom and my uncle that that lamp was supposed to go to me, and they decided to give it to a cousin. Um, thankfully, my family get, gets along well enough, and I was able to eventually get the lamp back. It's now um, in my office, but um, it's very important that you designate your desires um, because Weddings and funerals bring out the worst in people and your family will fight over sentimental items. Um, they're, they're in their amygdala brain. They're wrought with emotion. And if you spell it all out for them, um, you're going to save your family a lot of heartache. Um, my personal um, family, my cousins, I had an aunt that passed away and she had four children. Um, they had to call the police in. It was so bad. And to this day, my cousins don't speak. 
that they were two and two. Um, so I've seen firsthand what happens when you don't designate your desires. Um, okay, so another thing that you can do, um, and I've been meaning to find this picture, but that that um, poncho my cousin sent to me a couple of years ago. Uh, it was something that my grandmother had made for her. And um, when I say cousin, it was my grandmother's niece. It was my mom's first cousin because I said I was an only grandchild. So I'm just giving you the context. Anyway, um, she sent me this poncho with a picture of her wearing the poncho holding me. And now it's my poncho and my problem. <laughs> so you can gift things to loved ones, even if they tell you no, you can slip it in a nice gift bag, bring it over as a hostess gift or send it as a birthday present. Um, and that is one way that you can share. And then it's their problem. And I always like to tell um, my sandwich generation clients, if your parents offer you something and you don't want it, say yes anyway just because it feels good for them to, to have it gone. Um, I didn't get to get into this the last time, so I'm glad I have time now. It's just to talk about Swedish death cleaning. Um, how many of you show of hands have heard of it? There's actually a show right now. It's either on Bravo or Hallmark on this topic, Swedish death cleaning. Jean, thank you. You've been, you're my MVP today with all of the hands up. Um, so Swedish death cleaning is proactively going through your belongings as if you had passed. And this started um, when, as I said, how many of you have ever had to go through a loved one's home and you realize what a pain it is? So if you look at the picture on the right, I was visiting my mom um, in January. She's in Florida. She lives in a senior community and um, Florida to California is not a short drive. And I said, you know, mom, I don't even know what you have. I don't know what's of value. I don't know what's significant, but I can tell you that I can't take all of your stuff back to California. And I'm going to feel horrible if you leave it for me. And I have to now, while I'm mourning, deal with it. So do you think as a gift for me, you could start going through your belongings? And this is called Swedish death cleaning. So um, let me just give you the highlights of Swedish death cleaning. It's an opportunity to give your belongings to your loved ones while you can watch them enjoy them. You don't need to wait until you pass to give those things away. Um, you wanna make sure that you get anything that's in storage or hidden away um, out so that you know exactly what you have. You want to leave anything of nostalgia for last because we will all get tripped up going down memory lane. It's really important that you designate your wishes. Uh, you can use a computer program to do that. There's something called Pinventory you can use where you can do an inventory of your entire home and you can designate who gets what. You can just you know, put it in a note. You need to make sure that everybody knows what your intentions are. You wanna make sure that you've documented your passwords and your logins. I use LastPass. Um, if you've never used a password um, uh something that stores your passwords, it's life-changing because it goes across all your platforms and you only have to remember one um, login and you have to write it down and put it somewhere and it's going to be something crazy that nobody would ever guess. And um, that has been so helpful for me because I don't know about you guys, but I am constantly forgetting passwords and having to reset. Um, know that it doesn't have to be done all at one time. Uh, okay, so here, if you are Swedish death cleaning, here are some questions you want to ask yourself. Um, will anyone be happier if I save this? Um, so I like to uh, talk about that retainer because that was mine. I love that I kept a picture of it, but when I was downsizing and going through a divorce and I had to go through my own things, um, you know, it, it puts things in perspective for people when they see it. Um, I wasn't crazy when I kept it. I thought that if I put it back in my mouth, my teeth would go back to their original position. After a few years, I forgot that I had it. It is one of the things that did go into the garbage because I don't think any of my kids wanted it. Um, can it be photographed? Um, and, and a lot of times you will, as I asked, you know, Jean said, yes, it could be photographed. I think it was Jean. Um, and, you know, that was the prom corsage and all the other things. And now here's my my favorite question. Um, if any of you can answer, this would be help me because, again, it's a whole lot funnier when I have people that are responding. So if um, if I asked you if you had something that you might not want found and you put it into a box that said, please do not open, 
Do any of you think you might have family members who would open it anyway? Anybody? Thank you, Sally. Yes. So this is what you do. You put a bottle of tequila in the box with a note that said, I did ask you not to open it, but if you're going to, I hope you will have some good laughs. Um, so that is my personal um, addition to the Swedish death cleaning. You're not going to see that one on the TV show. That's a Jamie Shapiro exclusive. Uh, okay. Um, what do you do with unwanted items? All right. So first of all, I think it's important to understand the value of those items. Um, and there's something that you can use called Google Lens. Um, I actually went to use it this weekend and they've changed it. It's no longer that icon. But if you type in Google Lens, it's like a G now. But type in Google Lens and add it to your phone. And then what you can do is you can take a picture of an item and it will give you an idea of where you can buy it and what it might cost. Um, you can also look up an item on eBay and see what the item has sold for. Here's another one of my, my, my quick stories. My daughter wanted to take this um, jean jacket. It was a guest jean jacket that I had purchased when I was 15 years old, paid for half of it. It was a very big deal. She, it was $85 in 1985 when I bought it. She wanted to take it to camp. I said it was very valuable. She couldn't take it to camp until I looked it up on eBay and it was only worth about $30. And then the other thing I like to tell people is you have to depreciate that item. So a lot of people think, well, I paid you know $10,000 for it when I bought it. Well, how many years ago did you buy it? And how many years did you use it? So you have to depreciate the item. Okay. Um, when we work with clients, we, we really, I have a puzzle there because that's what it is. Some items you know, can be sold. Um, some items, and I'll tell you what's, um, what's very popular now and how, and how to get a good idea of what can be sold is go into your local stores and see what they're selling. And even watch the TV shows that are current. You're going to start to see the mid-century modern furniture. That's that velour furniture with really sleek lines, gold chrome. It's not the big bulky brown furniture, right? So if you can't find it in a furniture store, it's going to be very hard to sell it in this market. So that's why nobody wants your big brown stuff. Um, but if you have mid-century modern or you have kitschy things from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, vintage wear, those things people want. Um, so again, there's no one size solution for everything. So I'm going to share with you a couple of different uh, things that you can use. One is called um, Craigslist. How, how many of you have ever used Curb Alert on Craigslist or are familiar with it? I'll tell you how it works. It's great. Okay, Jean, Jean, wonderful. So um, if you don't want to have to call a hauler away, and sometimes you have something that is not in great condition um, and you don't necessarily, you might not be able to donate it, you bring it to your front curb, you put a sign on it that says free, and then you post it on different sites. Um, I usually will post it on Craigslist. It used to be called Curb Alert. Now you have to go and look for free postings and you can post it there. You can also post it on OfferUp. Um, and usually if you bring something to the curb, you stick a sign on it by the end of the day, usually it will be gone. And that will save a lot of, of hassle. Um, prior to buy nothing, or, so let me tell you what buy nothing is because I'm sure there are people on here who don't know. So Buy Nothing is a Facebook hyper-local group, meaning that in order for you to join the group, you have to prove what your zip code is. And you can post things that you want to give away on this Buy Nothing group. You can also offer things on Buy Nothing. It works great. I've used it quite a bit personally if I've had a birthday party or an event or if needed craft supplies. Um, so that's Buy Nothing. Free cycle predates the Buy Nothing. And it is something where you could find like craft supplies or other things um, posted on free cycle. And it's really a play on recycle because what we're trying to do is keep things out of landfills. Um, that picture was the China, my personal China that I shared with you guys, I registered for. When I went through a divorce, um, I did not want to keep my China because to me, it was um, what's called a malignant memory, which means it wasn't going to make me feel good to have that China. I, I actually um, recently uh, saw someone make a post that they had um, a really bad relationship with their father and he had given them this, garage, this uh, guitar and they had moved this guitar with them everywhere they went and ultimately realized that the guitar made them feel badly. 
Um, so if you have an item that you're holding on to because somebody gave it to you or you don't have a good memory attached with that person, then you should let that go. Uh, this china, I did offer it to all of my children. I said that I would happily pack it up and store it for them. Um, my oldest child at the time was in college. None of them wanted it. They didn't want it because we weren't really using it anymore. I could have possibly sold it. I have heard that um, replacements.com, um, when I've given the talk just recently, someone said it's not so great anymore, but replacements.com used to be a place that you could sell china and crystal. And you could also buy, if you were missing a piece, you could actually buy pieces that you needed to complete your sets. Um, and the best place in San Diego that used to take china and crystal was um, the Ark down in La Jolla. Um, but that stuff is also hit or miss anymore. Um, but so my China crystal, nobody wanted it. I, I, I might have been able to sell it, but I decided to think of what was my energy going to be worth. I decided instead to post it on my personal Facebook page and um, see if anybody might have family member who wanted it. Um, and somebody did end up wanting it. Their, their child had gotten married during COVID. They had not been able to have the big wedding. And so uh, she came and picked it up. My only regret was I didn't get a thank you note. But that's a whole other conversation. Um, but I personally, to me, it meant more to put it out into the universe and give it to someone than to try to sell it. And I will also tell you that donations and your belongings, you might get one tenth of the value. So sometimes I tell people, just consider um, putting it out there uh, just for the goodwill. Um, okay. I see that there is some a question in the chat. So I'm going to read that and then I'm going to move on. Um, sorry. Oh, next door. Thank you, Sue. Yes, next door is another great one, like buy nothing that you can use um, if you want to give things or sell things. And I'm going to go over some more um, apps that you can use as well. Um, I've got to shrink the chat. The buttons are not responding. That's why I'm getting so frustrated. Okay. So um, how do you see... Thriving thrift stores. So we do have some great thrift stores in San Diego. Like I said, if you happen to have vintage wear, um, you might do well there. Um, and it looks like I missed a page. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm looking for the next page that I have here. No. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to just talk about it. It's, you're not going to see it on the screen. No, yeah, there it is. Sorry, that's the page I wanted to talk about. I'm not going to cover garage sales today because you all know about garage sales. Um, I always tell people that's just an assessment of how you want to spend your time. If you are someone that likes to go to garage sales on Saturdays um, and that's how you want to spend your free time, then I'm all for it. Um, you're never, ever going to get back the amount of time that you spend on a garage sale. I always like to talk about estate sales because a lot of times when we're working with a client, that's going to be the first question that they have is, I'd like to do an estate sale. Um, let me tell you about how estate sales work, especially now. Estate sale companies are going to do the cream of the crop because how they work is they're going to take usually 40 to 60% commission. So if they're spending one week of their time getting your home prepped as a store, they want to generally know that they're going to be able to get about $10,000 worth of stuff to make it worthwhile. You also have to be able to live in a house that has easy um, access, which means that you're not in a gated community and they don't have to ride an elevator to get up or down. The other thing I will tell you about estate sale companies is make sure that you read the fine print because a lot of times they will have sort of a, we need to make at least $3,000 and then you will make your money. So make sure that you're checking those out. Um, we already talked about liquidation and buyout. I really am a bit, big advocate of online auctions. That's something that we actually help our clients with. You can actually do it on your own. It's much easier than an estate sale. And how it works is there's a very easy to use platform called Max Sold. Um, they take about a 30% split from you. And what happens is you go into your home, you use their platform, you photograph everything, you create lots. And then you post it. And then typically you want about at least a 14 day window between the time that you're doing the auction and you need to have it all out because uh, you want to give an auction about 10 days. You'll have a Saturday pickup. There's usually a nine to noon pickup window. 
The first thing that they come and pick up are the little things. And then they'll finally come and pick up the furniture. By the time they're showing up to your home, they've already purchased the item online. And you have a list of exactly who's coming into your house. Um, that is really going to work well if you are um, leaving your house and the only things that are going to be left are the things that you are selling. Or you can also do this in a garage if you're willing to open, like sort of like a, a, a different take on a garage sale, but you've now posted it and exposed it to multiple buyers. Um, donations, again, you need to call the donation um, sites to see if they're even taking what you have. We do have a list on our site of donation um, of donation sites, and there is a handout that I'm happy to email to all of you at the end of this presentation that also has that information. And then a junk hauler. Um, I personally am not a fan of junk haulers because they are going to take your stuff to the dump. Um, they're going to charge you a sum of money, so it's an easy way to be done with it. Um, and 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 then they're going to like i said take it away i would prefer to liquidate or buy out when i when i can do that because to me it, it's better for the environment and it's one of um our core values of our company is is being green okay sorry now i can go so th uh, thriving thrift stores again um we we do have a nice market um te teens especially are really into thrifting that's actually a picture that i took of my daughter she's a um, a junior at UC Davis. She was home for the holidays and um, the thrift stores are alive and well in San Diego. Um, all right. Okay. So let me give you another summation of what's selling. Um, oh, if you do want to go to a thrift store, some thrift stores will require you to um, make an appointment. So before you go, you just want to call and see what their policy is. Um, what's selling in San Diego, mid-century modern with clean lines, 50s, 60s, Scandinavian and Danish design, 70s, quirky and retro, novelty, vintage, orange, green, plant stands are in, some Asian is selling, vintage clothing from 50s, 60s, 70s, um, I told you the big brown furniture is out, um, China and Crystal aren't selling, um, okay. All right. If you are going to sell online, it's very important that you take good pictures. You describe your item well and you price it right. And that also includes if there's a stain or a rip, you want to take a picture of that. Um, so use natural lighting. Um, you want to have the condition, color, size, and category or any flaws that the item has, what the brand name is, um, because some shoppers will specifically search for those brand names. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple different sites you can use. I actually just sold, personally sold some leather couches this past weekend on OfferUp. I really like OfferUp because just like if you're using Uber or Lyft, you get a rating of that seller or that buyer. Um, and so then you at least have some way of tracing who they are. And I will also do this, uh, buyer or seller beware. There are people out there who um, not only will scam you, but also will come into your home and um, are maybe not the most honest people. So I never want to see people online selling unless uh, you feel very, very comfortable. Um, try to meet in public. And, and that's a whole other um, conversation. Um, I'm just going to go over the, you know, the apps to use. Um, and, the, and this will also be on that handout that I'm going to share Card cash, I don't know if you know this, but if you have unwanted gift cards, you can actually sell those unwanted gift cards and maybe pick up gift cards that you do want. Um, Cherish is one for home furnishings. I have not worked with Cherish before. I have used Craigslist. Craigslist is more established. Um, and you can also use it as I shared for items that aren't sellable. Um, Declutter is for tech items. Um, eBay is great for collectibles. Um, it actually started, I used to collect Pez back in the day. Uh, it started as uh, people to sell Pez, believe it or not. Um, Facebook Marketplace is another one that I tell people if you're not really comfortable, that would be the one that I would go to because then you can actually see if you have mutual friends. Um, and it's good for, you know, local. Um, five Miles is, um, I haven't used it, but it got good reviews and it's again for local sales and it, it's based on location. Uh, Real Real is one that we use in our industry. It's better for high end items. 
Um, so if you have luxury items, you might want to contact Real Real and they will um, come and pick it up depending on what it is, wrap it if it's artwork and they will um, sell it for you. Uh, I shared with you that I worked with Offer Up this past weekend and I really like it um, for local. And again, you can trace who that, that buyer or that seller is. Poshmark is good for gently used clothing. Um, Mercari actually had very good reviews because they are sort of taking care of the fear of the pickup and bringing strangers into the home. So if that's something um, that you want to explore, I would try Mercari. If you have a an old wedding dress, still white. Swappa is another one for tech. I talked about replacements already. I'm, I've heard mixed things about replacements. Um, and Thread Up is another one for consignment clothing. Um, and again, you want to avoid the resale market scams. When I uh, was getting um, downsizing into my current home, I was moving in with my boyfriend and I needed to get rid of like half of my household. In, in the industry that I'm in, I there were some new scams that even I was surprised about where they wanted to like set up a Google code. And um, a lot of these, um, these online sites are designed for you to collect money within the site. Be very, very careful when you are exchanging money with somebody. Um, take extra precautions. That's another reason that I like Mercari because they've really set things up. I briefly talked about if you want to do an online auction, um, you can do it yourself on Max Sold. But if you want some assistance with it, we can actually come out, bring the iPad, show you how to use it, show you how to do a lot. And then we can be there on pickup day. And that's a good way for you to save some money because you're going to do the majority of the labor yourself. The most labor is really just in photographing and describing the item. So if that's something that you're interested in, we can definitely help with that. We also have people on our team who will come in and evaluate what you have, tell you what they think that they can sell and broker the sale. That's what happened with that $15,000 painting. When she came in to assess what they had, she found the painting. And um, on her name is Christine. She's got 30 plus years of estate sale experience. So um, we love having her on our team. I don't know what we're going to do when we lose her. Um, all right. So I'm not going to talk about goal setting in this one. Um, this was, uh, this was a, an older version of the right sizing support flyer. Um, the new one has been updated and it will also include those, um, apps that I talked about. So now I'm going to open the floor up for, um, any questions that you have. And I just want to mention too, that if you, um, decide that you'd like to work with us for home organizing, um, if you will mention that you were on this talk, um, then we will give you a 10% discount off our services good for the next six months. So six months from today, and I'll put that in the notes. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the share. Oh, it seems like I've got a lot of questions too. So stop the share.